Hello there and welcome to today's video. And the topic we've got for today is right, how to make more sales more easily, more often. Now, I mean, life is all about sales. Think about it. I mean, sales is not just something you do in a business, right? Sales is in our life. Think about this. I mean, for example, if you're going for a new job, that's a sales process, right? It is. The interview you take for it is a real sales process. Um, getting your kids to do their homework or to eat their greens, that's a sales process, right? Handling maybe a difficult mother-in-law, that's a really, really tough and interesting sales process, right? Getting married, getting engaged, that's a sales process. In my case, getting my granddaughter to stop talking for a minute, that's a heck of a sales process. So today I'm going to share with you some reasons why maybe you're struggling with sales and what you can do about it, all right? And thank you for joining me. My name is Peter Beckett, I'm the Village Marketer. And as always, talking to you from my little Thai village, way up near the Cambodian border. All right, let's get started, okay? A really, really well-known marketer by the name of Neil Patel, okay, P-A-T-E-L. He said this, Focus on the needs of your customer rather than the needs of your business. Okay, this is a backbone of getting more sales more easily, more often. And this is the reason why I give away a lot of content. People say you give a lot of content away, you're stupid, right? But I do. And I create videos like this to help give people ideas and thoughts and things. Why do I do that? Right? Because I'm thinking more of my customer than I am of me. And the idea is by doing this, and if you do this, right, and you give away content and your best content, or if you're doing a Facebook Live, give it your best shot, even if you're feeling lousy, right? Why? Because it helps build your brand. Secondly, it helps build the awareness of you, okay? Thirdly, it helps build trust between you and your potential client. And, of course, that means you've started to build relationships with people. So there will be people who may be watching this video, maybe live or maybe the replay, that think, maybe I can trust that old guy from Thailand, all right? And that's what it's all about. So it's really relationships. That's the key. If you want more sales more easily, more often, focus, don't focus on any smart, anti-pansy script things, right, or trying to convince people, persuade them to do things they shouldn't do. Build a relationship. Okay, this ain't rocket science, but it's very, very true. Build a relationship, okay? Seth Godin, another really good market, actually said something once, and he said, selling to people who want to hear from you is a lot easier than trying to interrupt people who don't, right? <laughs> Think that through. Selling to people who want to hear from you is a heck of a lot easier than trying to interrupt people who don't. In other words, if you have no relationship with anybody, it's a lot more difficult, a lot more challenging, and a lot more of a pain in the butt, right, when it comes to sales, right? Again, focusing on the need to build relationships. Now, let's come to you. Maybe one of the biggest reasons why you may be struggling with sales, okay, is because you don't stick with it long enough. Think this through. I'm not being personal, I'm being totally, totally open with you, okay? I mean, Tiffany Patterson shared some thoughts from Notre Dame, or if you're in the United States, Notre Dame, okay, university, right? And this is the research they found, and they did thousands and thousands and thousands of interviews of people who've been through sales experiences, right? And as a result of that research, this is what they came up with. And remember, I'm saying to you, stick with it long enough. First of all, 44% of all sales do not take place until after the fourth contact, right? The fourth contact, not the first, second or third, the fourth contact. Nearly half the sales that take place in any niche, in any country, anywhere, are after four contacts have been made. So don't be so stupid and rely on the fact you're going to send one email and get a sale. I mean, it's stupid expectation, right? This is the other thing you need to know is this. <clears throat> the higher the price point is, the bigger the relationship is going to be required to sell it anyway, right? Now, I've mentioned to you 44% of, of, of all sales take place after four contacts. Here is the interesting thing, right? 
actually, I, let me think, I, maybe I've made a mistake there. I think, yeah, sorry, 60%. Yeah, oops, the days you're getting off on stupid. 60% of all sales take place after the fourth contact, not 44, 60%. More than half the sales take place after you've had four contacts with people. My apologies for my math mathematics. Whoops. Okay. Now, this is where the 44% comes in. 44% of people, businesses, small business, salespeople, whatever, give up after the first contact. Okay. 24% give up after the second contact. 12% give up after the third contact. I mean, what I'm getting at is this, that 94% of people, okay, give up after four contacts with people, 94%. And I've already just told you that 60% of sales require at least four contacts. But if you're giving up after four contacts, then you're missing out, right? This <laughs> is crazy. You need to stick with it. Now, obviously, that other 6%, right, who are still hanging in there and do more than four contacts, and they're the ones that sweep up and get all the business, right? These people here are persistent. These people here nurture uh, and nourish relationships. They take the time and they're patient to build a relationship. Persistence, nurture. Um, <laughs> nourish, I'm going more today, no, nourish. And, and care for people, care for relations. If you do that, if you do that, then you've got a much better chance of getting more sales, all right? Now, use this to your advantage. Think about that. If you know that 94% of people give up after four contacts, then just hang in there, hang in there. You're giving yourself a much better chance and accept the fact that everyone says no. We all say no, okay? But it doesn't mean they're saying no to you permanently. They're saying no to you at that particular moment or what point in time or the offer you give, whatever it is. It doesn't mean they will not say yes to you in the future, all right? All I'm saying to you is you need to be in contact with people more than four times to give you so many chance of getting any business. That's my message too. And apologies for mucking up the mathematics. Ooh, this is crazy. All right. Now, another thing about getting more sales, right? And thanks for putting up with my mathematics. More contacts result in more contracts. More contacts result in more contracts. The difference between contact and contract is one letter, R. And what's it come back to again? Relationships, all right? I hope you like that one, let's made that one up. Now, persistent, by the way, always trumps talent. Persistence always trumps talent. If you hang in there, if you keep giving value, okay? I can tell you right now, you don't have to be the smartest person on the block. You just have to have be someone who's prepared to hang in there and work with your potential client so they can see that you are realistically wanting to help them when you're hanging in there. You're not being a pain in the butt. You're not trying to interfere with them. You're not trying to convince them. You're there to serve them. And if you serve them long enough, they will believe in you with the no like, trust and respect factors to do business with you. That's how you get more sales more easily and more often. Here's a few other things. Keep your word. Keep your word. Do not promise things that you can't deliver. Very important, right, in terms of getting more sales. That's a really quick way to destroy your credibility, to destroy your reputation. Secondly, remain transparent, okay? Show that you're real, like I did today. I was real. I mucked up all my maths, right? But, I mean, that's what it's all about. We are, we are human. We are imperfect, right? So show that you're transparent. And the other thing about being transparent from a business perspective is to actually let people see behind the scenes. Share with them behind the scenes what's going on, how you go about doing what you do. That means you are being more transparent with people, okay? Next thing, respond to your friends and followers. Respond to all the requests, comments, whatever it may be, and do it as quickly as you can. Do not take those things for granted. Some people do that. Do not ever take a comment people leave for you on social media for granted. Respond to the comment to the best of your ability, all right? Next one, in terms of getting more, more sales more easily, more often, 
admit the mistakes you made. <laughs> Today, I admitted the mistake. I, went, I mucked up 60% and 44, right? That's who you get, right? If you make a mistake, don't try and cover it up, okay? I mean, you caught, I got caught, what's north tonight, right? Don't try and cover it up. Simply go about explaining to them how you're going to fix it. If you do that, you will win more trust, more know, like, and respect, okay? And, and by trying to cover it up, you're going to kill yourself, and that's going to really destroy any chance you've got for future sales, okay? Next one. Really key point in terms of more sales, more easily, more often. People are not looking for benefits. People are not looking for features. Right? People are not looking for products. People are looking for solutions. That's what they're looking for. So that's what you need to give them. Forget the products and the benefits and all that sort of stuff. Give them a solution to their problem. But in order to give them a solution to their problem, that brings me to the next one. You need to clearly identify who your ideal customer is so you can actually be in the ballpark to help them, right? Think about that. Who is your ideal customer? Then what are the problems of your ideal customer? This is what you need to know then and only then can you start providing solutions. If you don't know, what their idea, what their problems are, how in the heck can you give a solution to them, right? Next one, create your USP, your unique selling proposition. In other words, why should people deal with you? Okay, this is a big call. This is a really big call. You need to know and come up with reasons why people will deal with you. Thank you again for all the hearts. I appreciate it, especially after my, my, my mistakes today. Okay. Think about that, your unique selling proposition. That's a challenge. Come if you need help with that, reach out and message me, all right? Next one, use content marketing, okay? I mentioned this, alluded to this before, but create content. You don't have to be Einstein to do this. Mr. Google is there for you. Just use Google, okay? And come up with suggestions for whatever may be the, the example of the basic pain points and problems in your niche and put your own words around it, and it's yours, right? No one owns the information, but you can create your own interpretation of it and make yourself an extremely valuable resource, all right? So use content marketing. Don't be scared about that. Don't be scared. And the more content you can put out there, the more relationships you're going to build, right? Next one, learn how to negotiate. This will definitely help increase your sales more often and more easily. Learn how to negotiate. Now, what you need to do in terms of negotiating is one, asking good questions. Secondly, be patient, right? Remember I told you before, there's only 6% that hang in longer than four contacts, right? Be patient, hang in there. So ask good questions, be patient, and be well prepared. Those three things are the basics of negotiation. Without them, you will not be able to get your kids to do their homework or handle your mother-in-law or get a new sale or whatever it might be, right? Think of that. Now, by the way, food for thought. Amateurs offer advice. Is that what you do? Amateurs offer advice and they try to do it as quickly as possible. And as soon as, as, soon as an opening's there, they give advice to people. My suggestion to you is don't give advice. My suggestion is diagnose. Diagnose, okay? Never assume anything from your potential clients or your existing customers. Work with them to help clarify what their real issue or challenge pain point is right now. Do not assume anything at all. Do not try and give quick advice. That is dangerous stupid and a really quick way to kill your reputation and any sales potential you've got. Act like a doctor, okay? That's what doctors do. They diagnose before they prescribe. That's what I'm asking you to do as well, okay? Now, here's a big tip to finish, a big tip for you. Never jump in with a quick solution, as I just said to you. And what I would suggest you do is this. If you're dealing with a big sale or an important sale or one that you really want to have, whether it's big or small, okay, when you've done your discovery session with them, maybe you spent 15 minutes trying to diagnose what their problems, needs and pain points are. When you've done that, 
then simply say to them, let me think about this. I want to make sure I give you the right decision. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Now they might be thinking, what are you doing this for? Think this through. This gives them the chance to think, wow, you're not pushing me too hard, okay? Secondly, what you do is you then give them a summary, okay, of the, of the discovery meeting you had. You send it to them, okay? And so therefore they know that you are listening. Therefore they know that you are thinking clearly about how you can best help them. And that is a way to differentiate yourself. That is a way to start building your unique selling proposition. You don't have to do that every time. It's just a tip you can use at particular times when you definitely want that sale, all right? Okay, there you go. I hope you got some fun and some enjoyment out of that. Now, by the way, my call to action for you is my Facebook group, Your Next Level. If you'd like to come and join us there and grow yourself and your business to the next level, I would be delighted and excited to welcome you. All right, everybody, thanks for sharing your time with me. I hope you got some real value out of that, okay? The key point, the really key point, build relationships. That's how you get more sales more easily, more often. No smarty pants scripts. Build relationships, show people you care, show people you are there to serve them, and I can tell you, your sales will take care of themselves. Until next time, bye for now. Okay, cheers.